Dear friends, is it possible to be a Dharma warrior for peace? I recently received an email from a Dharma practitioner in Texas about a scripture passage addressing the art of war and the art of peace. In his email, he said. Master Sotesa mentions the Dharma practice of equanimity, wisdom, and precepts as the primary expedients to create peace in this world and subdue Mara. What is this practice, and how can we best apply it to our daily living? Our Dharma friend said he felt. The scripture verse he was reading was especially relevant, as we witness warfare, violence, and chaos around the globe. I also am guilty, he continued, of wars raging in my own mind. Just the other day, I could feel fiery energy spring up when someone cut me off on the road. This is why I believe this practice to be essential to health and well-being, not only for the world at large, but also for each of us. Here is the verse he referenced. It is from a talk by the founding master to practitioners at a retreat. We call. The dharma of our practice for restoring peace to a chaotic, disturbed world, the art of war, and you are like cadets who are learning this art. The disturbed world I'm talking about is the one that arises in people's minds. The country of the mind is originally whole and peaceful, bright and clear. But it becomes dark and turbid, complicated and disturbed, due to the mara of egoistic and selfish desires. Because sentient beings constantly live with their minds at war, they experience few peaceful days in the countries of their minds. Our art of war is the method. We use to conquer all of our mind's delusions by training in equanimity, samadhi, wisdom, prasna, and the precepts, shila. This way of practice is the best method for quelling chaos in the world. If we look into the origins of the large and small wars among individuals. Families, societies, and countries, we see that all wars derive from the wars raging in people's minds. The minds war is the origin of all other wars, and the most severe of them all. And the method for pacifying the minds wars is the most important art of practice. Therefore, you must fully understand this and devote yourself to cultivating equanimity and wisdom, while observing the precepts with the utmost effort. If you practice continuously over a long period of time, you finally will conquer the entire army of Mara. Once this is accomplished, it is my conviction. That you will attain the stage of Dharma strong and Mara defeated, you will become excellent commanders who pacify this world of rage. Wow, how do you feel about this Dharma passage? For me, the key points of the passage are one. The country of the mind is originally whole and peaceful, but the mara of egoistic and selfish desires turns our minds into battlefields. 
two. The mind's war is the origin of all other wars. Three, calming our minds is the greatest art of peace. Four, the threefold practice enables us to become skillful commanders who can pacify the world. With what's happening today. It may be hard to believe that we can pacify the world. Is that even possible? With regard to the art of conquering Mara, the threefold practice can be expressed in various ways: equanimity, wisdom, precepts, or samadhi. Prasna, Shila, or cultivation of one's spirit, inquiry into human affairs and universal principles, mindful choice in action, or simply pause, think, act. How can we practice this in our daily living? Equanimity. By pausing and meditating, we ground and center our minds. Wisdom. Through inquiry and contemplation, we cultivate clarity and insight. We study the true nature of our world and ourselves beyond our immediate experience. Mindful action. This means implementation. With the wisdom of a calm, focused mind, we act more skillfully to manifest blessings in everyday life. Don't just sit around with a worried mind, but do something. Do what you can. Share your loving compassion. The threefold practice may sound ideal and even unattainable, but through this training of mind, we become less impulsive and less reactive to disturbing conditions. This can be a lifelong. Aspiration and practice. Here is an example of what the threefold practice looks like in real life. These days, many of us are disturbed by the violence in Ukraine, the intensity of the invasion, elicits a strong emotional response, feeling heavy-hearted. Tearful, angry, or sick to the stomach. There is nothing wrong with these heavy emotions, but if our goal is to promote peace and end suffering, we need to tap into our calm, clear minds. If we are locked up in anger or anguish. Our vision will be narrow and clouded, so we must seek equanimity through meditation. But embodying equanimity is not sufficient by itself. This is why the threefold practice guides us to apply our calm minds to human affairs and universal principles. Sometimes it is difficult to discern wisely in the midst of a flood of news and contradictory information. From a perspective of curiosity and exploration, we can pause to consider how cause and effect plays out historically and geographically, and in current human. Affairs. We can also 
try to deeply listen to our hearts, the home of our innate wisdom. Ultimately, with calm spirit and informed mind, we decide what actions to take or not to take. This is the practice of a mindful choice and action. In our temple community, these are some of the ways we are responding to the war in Ukraine. We offer community prayers for the world peace. We dedicate meditation and chanting to world peace. We collectively and individually gather funds to help international aid organizations to support Ukrainian refugees. And we are exploring ways to support the arrival of refugees in North Carolina. These mindful actions arise from decisions based on equanimity, wisdom, and inquiry. We do not just sit content and deal only with the struggle internally. We need to then act toward each other in families, in relationships, in society on the basis of that calm, informed, loving energy not in hate or haste. As we face thousands of sensory conditions, the threefold practice is our compass. When practicing with the warm Buddhist communities, you will hear this over and over and over again. In the passage I read earlier, Sotesan affirmed that through the threefold practice, we attained the stage of Dharma strong and Mara defeated. What exactly is the stage of Dharma strong, Mara defeated? This is the fourth of six stages for attaining Buddhahood. Mara means greed, anger, and delusion in our minds, things that are not harmonious with the way. Dharma means the way, alignment with the truth, justice, and peace. The stage of Dharma strong, Mara defeated, describes practitioners who, when they engage in the battle between Dharma and Mara, with every application of their six senses, attain victory for Dharma. What does it mean to attain victory for Dharma? Not being separated from our practice mind, not being controlled by our desires, fears, impulses, and anger. Recently, my mind was disturbed because I felt judged, and I felt my hard work was not being validated. I noticed my impulse to do something to get rid of that feeling. After some contemplation, I chose not to act on that impulse. For a week, I fell weighed down with a low motivation. Then I noticed the power of Mara in my mind beginning to dissipate. I am glad that I sat with my discomfort for a week without adding fuel to the fire simmering in my mind. The other day, as we are having a bonfire from a huge dead pine tree, I was reminded that if we keep adding fuel 
to a fire, we end up with a giant blaze that consumes everything. If we don't add fuel, the fire naturally dies out. So it is with the flames in our minds. This is the art of war and peace. As we live in a globally interconnected world, the minds of leaders powerfully affect many people. Great impact arises when leaders either fuel the flame of conflicts, fear and anger, or inspire peace, cooperation, and harmony. Peace begins with all of us. Peace begins in our own minds. Let there be peace on earth. Let it begin with me. If we want peace in Ukraine and in the world, we must begin with ourselves. Those who conquer others may be strong. Those who conquer themselves with equanimity, wisdom, and mindfulness are mighty indeed. Shall we pause for a moment and let go of disturbances in our minds? From this mind of equanimity arises our wisdom to discern what is wholesome, just, and beneficial. We aspire to embody mindful choice in action. May we all become skillful and compassionate commanders, pacifying the rage of Mara in our minds. And contributing to peace throughout the world. <laughs>